PeachTools.com. G'day guys, what I thought we'd do today was assemble the old Hyundai Plasma Cutter, my latest new toy that I've got in the workshop. So what we'll do is we'll put the air filter at the back of it and we'll plug in our new torch and we'll give it a crack, Nigel. We'll see if we can actually cut something on the day. Anyway guys, same as usual, like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day in the comments below. And let's put this sucker together, eh? So the same as usual guys, we get a box with all the wonderful bits and pieces in it. Uh, everything we need to assemble the air filter thing at the back. So let's get into it. I'll show you how easy it is. So what we're going to need for this job guys is just the holder, the uh, water filter trap thing, and a couple of clips and other bits and pieces that we get with the kit that's provided that comes with the machine. So it's all pretty good so far. <laughs> as you can see guys, this machine here has the gauge in the front. So what we're going to have to do is plumb this water trap up through this gauge basically. So we can get the pressure on the front gauge and we don't have to muck around looking at the back and adjusting things at the back. So let's do it, eh? Piece of cake. This is the airline here that comes from the pressure gauge in the front. We have a standard water trap here, guys. It's all pretty basic, guys. This side says out. This side says in. And this one here is for this hose here. Because you notice that it's not the one on the other side because this side here has got a bung in it. So all you need to do is just look for the, the red tags like so, or blue or whatever they happen to be. They're just little plastic tags to stop dirt from getting into the uh, unit here. Piece of cake. So if we get our wonderful box of little bits and pieces, or bag of little bits and pieces, once again we've got thread seal tape, and I don't know if you've seen any of my videos before, but if you have thread seal tape, it normally means that it's quite a good quality machine, because they don't want you to have to go and buy anything to assemble it. We've got an adjustable airline holder here, a clip on one. We've got two or three hose clips like that, guys. We have an air in socket. I use different sort of sockets than this in my workshop, so I'll just use mine. But uh, I think this is the American version of it. And the rest, all we have is just some spare consumables and other bits and pieces. So guys, if we just start with the inside, we'll just pull the plug out. If I can get it out with no fingernails. There we go. Right, now the inside is going to be the direction that your ear's coming from. Like you have a snap-on fitting here, and that's what your ear hose connects into in your workshop so this is the inside just grab a little of your thread seal tape guys it doesn't take much just enough to stop it from leaking i find if i do it without thread seal tape it just leaks ever so slowly so it's just as easy just to run a couple of beads of thread seal tape around it like so and then screw it in the inside here guys all it's going to be is a fitting like this because we have to put a hose on here and connect it to there, which is this hose here. So once again, just with your thread seal tape, guys, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, just like so, just once again, just a couple of times around, just saves a lot of hassle in the future that you don't have to pull it to bits again if you have a slight little leak in it. Saves doing things twice, guys. Just hook them in there like so. Tighten them up just a little bit, just until it's nice and tight. Don't overdo it and strip it or anything silly like that, just like that. Now we've got our air connector coming in here, we've got it coming out there, and then we've got the one here, which is the little one for this airline here. So what we do with that is just pull this out again, guys. And the centre one here, guys, is this connector here, which is the plastic one, which has like a, um, a shark tooth sort of mechanism in it. When you push that down there, it's like shark teeth get hold of this and it won't come back out. And you're going to say to yourself, Pete, why don't you put thread seal tape on that? Because they've already given it to us with thread seal tape on, guys. So that's a bonus. So we screw him in there. Told you this was easy, guys. How easy is easy, eh? Take about 10 minutes, I'd say. Just screw him in there like so. Beautiful. Now what you need to do, guys, is get this bracket thing here. And it's got a little sort of raised piece here. You make sure that's down. Because that stops this from spinning around when you tighten it up. So we've got the raised piece underneath. Make sure it goes downwards, and then they supply you with a couple of little washers. Put them on as well. That gives us the sliding ability to slide it from one side to the other. Just tighten them up, guys. 
they don't get it to be too crazy with it. Just make sure it's tight enough that it's not going to fall off or flop around. I just normally do it finger tight and then just give it like half a turn with a with an open ender. Just until you feel it starting to snug up. Just like that. <laughs> then grab your water trap, undo the big plastic bung on top of it. Feed it up through here. And remember I told you that piece here has got a piece on the bottom of it. That's to stop this from rocking around when you tighten it up. They think of everything, don't they? Put your plastic nut on like so. Once again, guys, I wouldn't go crazy doing it up. I just do this up finger tight. I don't put a, a spanner or a crescent or an opening end or anywhere near it because it's only plastic after all. So what we need to do now, guys, is get a piece of hose, measure a piece to go from here to here. And they've kindly supplied us with this nice looking hose with a braid in it. So once again, I would just measure that to the shortest distance without putting a kink in it. So I'd say we're about here. Make sure that's about the right length, guys. Yep, looks about right to me. Put your hose clips on. What I like about this is they supply everything that you need to get yourself going, which is all good. There's nothing worse than having to go down the hardware shop and buy some thread seal tape or something like that. Because, you know, if you get your machine out of the box, do you want to be able to assemble it and start cutting? Not muck around going down the hardware store and buy bits to get it going. Just give these a little bit of a tweak up. Perfect, the Mundo. I love it when I start assembling a new machine. There's nothing more fun than getting it to the point where you can actually cut with it. Have a look here. This fitting actually moves independently to the nut underneath it. It was a bit stiff before, I didn't think it would, but it does which is ideal, so we can just take the shortest distance possible so that the hoses don't get tangled up with each other and just clip it in. But with this hose here guys, I'd measure twice and cut once if I was you because I have done it before where I've cut it too short and that would just ruin your day, you know. And getting something better to cut it with than long nose pliers would probably be a good idea as well guys but that's all I happen to have on my workbench. <laughs> I'll just trim up the end of it because it's um, a bit ugly because I cut it with long nose pliers. And then once you've got that sorted out guys, all you do is just poke this hose in there and you'll hear it go click, click. You can feel it too, okay, think. And then if I pull it out or try to pull it out, it won't come out. But I can get it out if I see this blue ring here. If you grab the side of the blue ring and you hold it down and then pull the pipe out. But if you don't hold this blue ring down, you can pull that as hard as you like and you'll just break the pipe. Once again guys, push it in, clip, and you hear it click. I wouldn't pull it in and out any more than five or six times because the o-ring will start to get damaged. So that's just if you make a mistake, that's just how you get it out. So guys, that was easy to do, wasn't it? I told you it would be. If, if I can do it, anyone can do it. So what did we get with this machine? We got an earth lead like that, which is about a basic 300 amp earth lead. So we'll put them in here. <laughs> Getting down to the business end there. I like it, I like it, I like it. We've got a adapter from 220 volt to 110, which is awesome. We got a whole lot of spare consumables, which is awesome also. And we got a nice looking AG60P plasma torch. Now this is the newer one by the look of it. So let's have a look how long it is guys. That's about 5 metres long guys, 15 feet. Beautiful, some of these cheap machines they only, they only give you like a 3 metre lead. So if I take this plug out of here, once again it's just a sort of a dust cap thing guys, take that out of there. We'll screw the earth and the power lead in here. See, I even notice on the switch guys, some of them just have the wire going in there. This has actually got a piece of reinforcing so you don't snap it off like I always used to do. They're just little things like that, just make you think the machine's just that little bit extra quality. Put him in there like so. And we have our pilot arc wire here guys, and that goes, we all know where the pilot arc wire goes. Goes into the pilot arc slot, and I just dropped that again. So just put them in there like so guys, make sure you do this pilot wire up tight because it has a tendency to vibrate when you're cutting, 
once it starts to vibrate it'll start to pit and burn out your connector here so just make sure it's tight just tweak it up right if i get this junk out of the way guys put some air onto it give it some power see what happens eh <laughs> uh, i haven't had a very good run with these things lately guys the last one i had i turned it on and it blew all the fuses in my workshop and that was the end of that so here's hoping let's try this one <laughs> look at that i still got the lights on things are lighting up cool tells me i'm on 220 volts at 50 amps 50 amp there post time about five we're running about 60 psi now will it actually fire up <laughs> i knew as soon as i took this one out of the box guys well, I didn't know, but I had a fair idea because you get to know over the years what's good and what's not. And like I said to you before, even this thing here with a little bit of reinforcing on that wire there, they don't have to put it on, but they just put it on because it just shows you they're caring about what they're selling. That's what I think anyway. Anyway, let's try and cut something, eh? So guys, we've got about 5 mil steel plate here. Here we go. First cut with the Hyundai 50 amp Pilot Arc Plasma Cutter. What will I do? Well guys, well I'm impressed with that. Have a look at that cut guys. I mean, how can you moan about that? Oh, I'm really impressed with that. First cut, machine out the box, cuts like that. <laughs> so guys, really how can you moan about that? This is one of the better machines that I've reviewed so far. We'll do a whole lot more in-depth tests on it. I'll see exactly how thick it can cut and we'll do all sorts of other bits and pieces. But I just wanted to show you how easy they are to assemble and what to expect when you get it straight out of the box. Anyway guys, same as usual, if you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day at peachtools.com. If you're interested in this machine, I'll drop a link in the description below, you can go and check one out for yourself. I think it was about 220 bucks or something ridiculous like that guys. Anyway guys, see you later.